Welcome to Inside Sim Racing. I'm Darren Ganji, and I'm here with my first impressions and look at the consumer version of the Sim Experience AccuForce wheel. And you may have seen our first look way back in November of 2013, and that was just a prototype, one off version. Now I've got the consumer version here, and I've been putting it through its paces for the last two, three weeks, and I'm going to tell you guys what I think about it. By the way, this is for the PC only. This wheel is not available for either of the, the new gen consoles, the PS4 or the Xbox One. So again, PC only. The AccuForce is probably the first direct drive wheel that's semi-affordable and within reach of a good portion of the sim racing enthusiasts. Sure, the Bodner sim wheel has been out for a while now, maybe a couple years, but at about five grand, that's more for racing teams and guys with unlimited budgets. The AccuForce is definitely within reach for somebody that can save up the money and wants the direct drive option. Speaking of pricing, here's what it goes for and what you get. The AccuForce Pro goes for $17.48 US dollars, or if you're an owner of SimVibe, you get an $89 discount and then it goes for $16.59. You get the base unit with a six foot cable, the force feedback controller, a wheel button box with paddle shifters, premium suede 320 millimeter steering wheel, two three foot USB cables with ferret filters, a three foot power cord, which is the same that's used on the PCs, and with an inline switch as well, so you can turn off the uh, force feedback controller, two M6 mounting screws, and Sim Commander software. There's also another option if you're a do-it-yourself type person, and you can get a DIY kit that runs for $14.49 or $13.60 for SimVibe owners, and it comes with a DIY motor with six-foot cable, the force feedback controller, two three-foot USB cables with the ferret filters, a six-foot power cord, and Sim Commander software. And then shipping's gonna vary depending on your location. Currently, the AccuForce is in back order status and shipping in batches due to the high demand, but Bernie Sim Experience told me that they are currently building a new production facility and hope to have them on the shelves ready to ship within the next few months. So when you place your order, it'll ship out within a day or so, and then you're just gonna have to wait on transit times. Or if you're in the Ohio area, near the Sim Experience new production facility, you can order it and probably go pick it up that day. Now on to some impressions. First off, the thing comes really nicely packed. Everything is in one box, the controller, the base, the wheel, the button box, cables, everything you need is in one box, nicely packed and safe from the potential abuse by FedEx and UPS. Honestly, those companies have gotten a lot better lately and, and mine came without any dents or dings, but the thing's so nicely packed that I would be comfortable with my investment uh, and it being shipped via those routes. First thing I noticed when I pulled out the uh, the base unit is that it is heavy. This is probably one of the heaviest wheels I have ever used. And speaking of being heavy, uh, I suggest mounting it to a substantial rig. I don't know about a desk, wheel stand. I've had people ask me, could I mount this to a wheel stand? I would say no. Uh, a, due to the weight of the unit, and B, due to the forces that it generates, I can't imagine a wheel stand actually standing up to that. So you need like a decent rig. I've got mine mounted to my JCL 2B Faster 8020 setup. And it uses the same mounting spots that the Thrustmaster T500, T300, or TX uses. Uh, but I recommend trying to use four holes. And I drilled out this wheel plate uh, that I had that I was originally using uh, to, to give me four mounting spots. So you have to get yourself an extra couple M6 screws if you don't have them, uh, but I highly recommend going that route. So on to some of the features that I'm really enjoying. Paddles are adjustable for a short or longer throw. Also can adjust the angle of how they sit, and you can adjust the placement. You can move them in about that far. There's some extra holes uh, to where if you got a smaller rim, it's, it, it's mounted for the 320 millimeter rim. Uh, but you can mount them a little bit in and I was using the uh, this cheap 290 millimeter suede rim and uh, Was able to get the uh, paddles in a perfect position for those I also tried out my 350 millimeter NASCAR style rim and the paddles are a little out of reach for that rim Only because it was a deep dish rim So it just pushed the paddles about that far away from the rim but actually the spacing would have worked fine. I have a more flat, uh, older Momo that I probably could have used with it. It probably would have worked fine, but 
using that rim for NASCAR style only. I could imagine just using those paddles maybe to look left and look right, because uh, I use my TH8 a shifter to, uh, to shift through the gears. So. so that worked great. And also I was able to reinstall the horn button, which is functional, by the way, uh, in that rim, because it's just a standard you know, uh, circle or I guess drilled out spot for uh, a standard horn. So you can use any rim uh, like that and, and use the uh, horn button. My uh, smaller rim didn't have the hole and I wanted to use my Momo uh, Mod 27, but, uh, and it would have worked, but I would have had to notch out the back of the rim here or there's a spacer that I can get and I'm gonna go that route and get a spacer so I can use my Momo with it. Uh, and as a matter of fact, if you go to the Owners Club forum, if you purchase a an AccuForce, there's a list that the community of AccuForce owners has created uh, of compatible rims that work with this button box. And speaking of the button box, what a great solution where you can just change out rims, you know, variety of rims from 280 millimeter, I'd say up to 350. It, it recommends 320 millimeter, but I, again, I went with the 350 rim with that NASCAR style. Uh, I love that you can adjust the top button modules to fit whatever rim you're installing. So it, it, it's really cool. Buttons have a nice solid press. They're supposedly long life buttons. I would have liked a little more of a click, but they do the job and you know that they're being pressed when you, you push on them. Paddle shifters are probably some of the best I've ever used in the industry. Nice positive click. You can adjust how far uh, you, the throw is on them and they just got a great feel wrapped in carbon fiber. So really enjoy the paddle shifters on this. And honestly, I like the button box and the quick release so much. I would love to have another one to where I, I can truly quick swap. Uh, and swapping out rims didn't take that long. It's basically three of the screws hold in the uh, horn button and then the other three mount the rim to the, uh, the button box mechanism. So it's a, it's a pretty, pretty quick swap. The fit and finish on this thing, and this thing looks like it could be mounted into a race car. It, it is really sweet looking. It looks and feels very rugged and as a matter of fact, it feels like it's indestructible. So now onto the performance. I tried it with iRacing Project Cars, Assetto Corsa, and Dirt Rally. And I haven't had enough time with Dirt Rally and Assetto Corsa to get it dialed in. They, they need a little bit more tweaking, but uh, with Project Cars and iRacing, I'd say they feel awesome. I'm currently using a beta version of the Sim Commander software that they have been testing for the past couple months. Uh, and they're currently on phase four and when they initially developed the AccuForce, they were basing the default settings in Sim Commander off of what real world drivers wanted based on feedback that they had provided. Bernie at Sim Experience has found that most sim racers that have never driven a real race car want more feedback, whereas a real race car driver wants it to feel just like their real world car. And both ways make a lot of sense to me. You would think that we would want it to feel like what the real race car drivers feel, but in all honesty, most sim racers have never driven a real race car and we don't know what it feels like. So I think we inherently want more feel out of our force feedback wheels so we can really tell what the car is doing. You know, in real life, they know what the car is doing and how it's gonna react. So they don't need those extra sensations like we do. So now the way that they are tuning Sim Commander and it should be, the new version should be available within the next few weeks. And as a matter of fact, as an owner of the AccuForce, you can download the beta that I'm using in the firmware and try all these new modes. But you can have the best of both worlds, you know, once this new version is available. So if you want it to feel like a real race car, you can. If you want it to feel more intense and get feel every bump and ripple on the road, you can make it feel like that too. So lots of adjustability in Sim Commander. And speaking of Sim Commander, it's probably one of the most powerful pieces of software in the sim racing industry. It powers not only the AccuForce, but SimVibe, the Sim Experience motion systems. It has telemetry functions, in-game dashboards, plus a ton of other features that I haven't even touched on yet. And now allows you to tune the AccuForce to exactly the way you want it. At first look, the tuning options can look a little overwhelming, but for those that want a plug and play experience, it can be had by just plugging in the wheel and adjusting these basic settings. As a matter of fact, you can run the wheel without Sim Commander uh, and just run the basic settings and the in-game force feedback. But for those that want to get the most out of the AccuForce, and I highly recommend you doing this if you're gonna invest in one, 
you can really tune it exactly the way you want it. There's also an auto-tune feature built into Sim Commander where you can drive with the default settings and then tune it to your best lap. Sim Commander will then adjust things based on peaks or clipping so that you can get the best possible force feedback from the game. There was a video published recently where multiple sim racers tried out a variety of direct drive wheels and one of them was the AccuForce. And in that video, this is before I got an AccuForce, they mentioned they weren't feeling the road and the rumble strips. And, you know, it, honestly, when I watched that, and based on my initial try of the AccuForce, you know, way back in 2013, I, I was just kind of shocked that they said that. And you know, maybe it was because of the way they had it tuned. Maybe it was because of the way Sim Commander was, was running with the default settings back then. But I have to say, there's so much life in this wheel that... I have to tune it down a lot of times and for example check me out driving the Lotus 79 at Lime Rock I ran into the wall and I had to pull my hands away because I feared injury. I mean, that's how much forces are being generated. And look how much life there is in the wheel as I'm going around the track at Lime Rock. Now, take the same car over to Circuit of the Americas and it's a lot more tame because Circuit of the Americas is a brand new track and probably doesn't have as many bumps and ripples and cracks in the pavement that Lime Rock has. But again, you can tune it the way you want. So that being said, I'm gonna wrap things up with some final thoughts. And I've tried the ECCI 7000, the Frex Sim Wheel, uh, and every other wheel pretty much on the market, all the way down to the low budget Logitechs and Thrustmasters. And I have to say that this wheel is a game changer. I truly feel like I have an advantage over the competition by running the AccuForce, especially with all the different ways that I can tune it to my liking. Sure, it might take some extra time to tune the profiles the way you want, and you can tune it per car, per track, or just per car and then alter it per track, but it's worth it. It's honestly like taking a setup, a chassis setup in, in sim racing uh, for a particular car, and then trying to run it at another track. You may need some tweaking a little bit, especially on the road courses, uh, ovals. Uh, you may need some slight tweaking if the track's very similar, but if you're going from like Martinsville to Daytona, there's gonna be a vast difference. And I, I wouldn't even say there's that big of a difference in tuning of, of Sim Commander. And again, you can just run the defaults if you, wanna, if you don't want to do all that tuning. Or you can download profiles through the Owners Club right through the Sim Commander software. So in other words, like the Lotus 79, I can upload that into the Owners Club form and then you can download it and drive it just like you can with setups in iRacing, let's say. Due to the extensive development that has gone into both the hardware and software and the fact that they continue to develop it to make it even better for the price and comparing it to other direct drive options, I think that Sim Experience offers the best turnkey solution on the market by a company known for quality and innovation. Last thing I'm going to say is that if you buy an AccuForce, make sure you watch the tutorial videos, go into the Owners Club forum, read there, as a matter of fact, you can even hit me up because I've spent a good amount of time getting that thing dialed in for this piece uh, and for future pieces that I'm going to do. Uh, so you can email me, darren at isrtv.com, and I'd be happy to help you. As a matter of fact, I'll even give you my phone number. You can call me, and uh, I'll help you get it dialed in based on my experience. So I hope you've enjoyed my first look at the AccuForce Pro by Sim Experience. More coverage to come. Going to show you guys how I tune it with different Sims and uh, probably put it through its final review. And uh, I gotta say, I'm enjoying the heck out of this thing. So if you were on the fence about getting one, I, I would highly recommend it. So for Inside Sim Racing, I'm Darren Ganji. We'll see you guys next time.